Now, I invite Dr. Karim Sadeh from Iran. He has many presentations and articles to his credit. He is working in Mother Hospital, and he has about 2,000 cycles of IVF ICSI annually. Good morning, Chase, ladies and gentlemen, my dear colleagues. At first, I have to thank Dr. Alabadio very much for his very nice organization and yearly organization of this gathering. And I hope these three days will have enough point for our clinical use after finishing this Congress. My talk would be about the effect of myoinositol supplementation on all sites quality in PCOD patients. As you know, the last definition that every gynecologist have accepted about PCOD is about the definition in Rotterdam in 2003, they defined PCOD as a patient with irregular irregularity, oligomenorrhea, hyperandrogenism, clinically or biochemically, and also the changes in the ovary uh, uh, as mean as um, small follicles, more than two to nine follicles or the volume of the ovary about 10 milliliters. But they don't point anything about some metabolic changes in the PCO patients. Because as you know, usually about 30 to 40 percent of PCOD patients have some problem in insulin resistance. And also insulin resistance can be seen about 80% of obese patients and 30 to 40% of lean patients. In the other word, we should say that we can see the PCO patient as a metabolic disease, not only a disease that its pathology is located only in the ovary. But about the role of insulin in the pathogenesis of PCOD. Usually, insulin or hyperinsulinemia is the key factor that has very important role in hyperandrogenemia in PCOD. Usually, synergistically acts with LH and enhance androgen level in theca cells because, as you know, the similarity of the follicle of insulin to insulin growth factor one that acts in theca cells. And also reduce the level of uh, SHBG. By this reducing, usually we may have free testosterone. As you know, during the late decades, it, it is clear that insulin sensitizers can improve hyperinsulinemia, hyperandrogenemia in PCOD, such as metformin, thyroglitazone, and so on. But what about myoinositol? Usually, myoinositol is, belongs to the combination of vitamin B complex. Human adults usually approximately use, consume one gram per day in many different uh, meals. Daily, usually, use one gram inositol. Insulin regulates the epimerization of myoinositol to deca into decairoinositol in a dose-dependent fashion. I should say that the inositol is usually epimerized by insulin in nine different isomers, that two of them, such as myoinositol and decairoinositol, are important in PCO metabolism and in regulation of hyperinsulinemia. In the other word, insulin acts 
on this epimerization and this epimerized decaioinositol and also especially myoinositol can act and prevent uh, um, uh, hyperinsulinemia. Myoinositol is the abundant form of inositol in nature, while DCI decaioinositol is synthesized by an epimerized convert myoinositol to decaioinositol. Myoinositol serves as precursor for the synthesis of phosphatidyl inositols. Here it is a, an important poem that metabolism of dichiro inositol and dichiro inositol, inositol phosphoglycan are related to compensatory of hyperinsulinemia in all women regardless of atibosity, origin, and PCO status. I should say that hyperinsulinemia acts on the changing and epimerization of myonositol on in dichiroinositol and inositol phosphoglycans. And as you know, uh, serine uh, phosphoglycation acts or help for insulin transfer in the membrane cell, membrane of cells. In case another problem or another point is increasing the clearance, urinary, urinary clearance of inositols in PCO patient, usually due to this phenomenon, the tissue availability of DCI and decrease the release of DCI IPG mediators, which could contribute to insulin resistance and compensatory hyperinsulinemia. But here, it is a, an important point in comparison of the effect of myoinositol or dichiroinositol supplementation on oocyte quality of PCOS patients. Only myoinositol rather than dichiroinositol is able to improve oocyte quality. It is suggested that ovaries in PCOS patients likely present an enhanced myoinositol to dichiroinositol uh, epimerization. In the other word, when myoinositol is reduced and dichiroinositol enhanced, we can think it may be the essence of physiopathology of PCOS or metabolic disorder in PCOS, the changing or uh, the rate of changing of myoinositol to decardinositol. This is enhanced in PCO patient, and the concentration of myoinositol will be decreased, and decardinositol increased, and by decreasing myoinositol could eventually, would be responsible for poor oocyte quality characteristic of in these patients. Total oocyte number is higher in groups that received myonistol. The mature oocyte is higher in myonistol, more than dichiroinositol, and top quality oocyte is higher in myonistol groups. Excuse me. But uh, as I mentioned at first, we look at the PCOD as a metabolic disorder, not, not only a disease that is located in the ovary or sometimes some defined uh, the pathology of physiopathology of the PCOD on the adrenal or thyroid disorders also, but it is a metabolic disorder. And we have impairment of lipid profiles and other profiles, met metabolic profiles. But by uh, giving myoinositol, usually the HDL cholesterol, the first evidence 
showing that myonizital treatment could be useful in reducing the risk of cardiovascular disease in PCOS patients by increasing HDL, lowering LDL, and uh, actually improving lipid profiles in the patient that received myoinositol. Here is a sentence that you can see, metformin and myoinositol are the first line treatment to restore normal cycle in tissue patients. I think all of you know that uh, we have had a sentence in Espiroff textbook, I think, previous addition that it was under a question, is maybe metformin replace the clomiphene as the first line? But the answer was under debate, and nobody today accepted that the metformin would be the first line. Clomiphene is the first line for induction and of ovulation. But for improving of metabolic disorders in the PCO patient, maybe use metformin and myonizitol for improving these problems. Myonizitol act activities or changes in the cellular levels. M uh, one of the characteristics of myonizitol is that act its action is not only on the nucleus, but acts in the uh, cytoplasm and nucleus of the cells and plays important role in cell morphogenesis, cytogenesis, lipid synthesis, structure of cell membrane, and also cell growth. But phosphatidyl inositol that usually act in the membrane of the cells regulate many cellular processes by releasing intercellular calcium and related to gamma development. As you know, the calcium have very benefit and effects on many metabolic changes or, or cell development or in uh, division in different uh, stages of the cell life. Calcium has very important effect. And uh, finally, induce oocyte maturation, fertilization, and early embryonic development. Myonizitol and oocyte effect signal transduction pathways in the ovaries, intracellular pathways in the oocyte, release of cortical granules, inhibition of polyspermy, completion of meiosis, activation of the cell cycle that subsequently results in embryonic development. One of the causes of poor quality in PCOS women might be the reduced energy metabolism that usually myoinositol uh, use uh, enhance the using the glucose in the cells such as uh, brain and heart and other cells and also maybe in the oocytes. Indeed, increasing the de chiroinositol dosage progressively negatively influence oocyte and embryo quality. Mm, role of myoinositol in PCOD. As I uh, mentioned, Usually, inositol changes epimerized to two types of inositol, dichiroinositol and inositol myoinositol. Dichiroinositol usually acts for collection and, you know, of the glucose in the cell and inhibit glycogenolysis. Myoinositol actually enhances using glucose and consuming glucose in the cell and actually improving the energy in the cells. So myoinositol is classified as an insulin sensitizing agent and it is commonly used in PCOD patient. The effect of myoinositol in PCOD risking response to endogenous gonadotropins usually uh, shorten the time of induction of ovulation and lowering the dose of the gonadotropins reduces hyperandrogenemia, reestablishes menstrual cyclicity and ovulation, increasing the chance of spontaneous pregnancy. But it may be have uh, some gastrointestinal side effects if our dose uh, is very high. 
Usually we use myonestol only four gram daily, two gram twice a day. But if use if we use more than six grams, we may be faced by some gastrointestinal disorders and complications. But effect on ovarian response in non-PCOD patients, there was significant reduction in the number of oocytes. Serum LH was higher in the treatment, and for this reason, can use this uh, uh, myonizitol for reducing the risk of hyperstimulation, and it is very important because by using of myonizitol, usually the eggs on that recruited or primary oocyte that is recruited um, will be reduced, and finally we have lower estrogen levels, and we may have lower hyperstimulation uh, in our patients. But about oocyte quality, myonistal supplementation in XCR PCOD patient causes lower E2 on HCG day, lower oocyte, higher mature oocyte, and reduce the rate of OHSS. It is a report of a, a study that, as you see, it is important the follicular fluid concentration in the uh, myonistol, myonistol concentration in follicular fluid, not serum concentration, has not uh, many effects. And as you see here, in myonistol, when myonistol follicular fluid was enough, the stage of embryo and embryo quality significantly will be better. Myonistol and on uh, effects on oocytes by treatment of myonistol plus folic acid that usually is uh, as inofolic with two gram inositol and 200 microgram folic acid reduces the germinal vesicle and degenerated oocyte at the ovum pickup, no compromising the total number of oocyte and the total number of fertilized uh, eggs. Inositol in induction ovulation with low dose gonadotropin. Inositol nutritional supplementation produced very good clinical results. When we decided to give supplementation for our patient, we should give at least two gram inositol six to eight weeks previous of starting <coughs> our induction for uh, our purposes, for induction of ovulation or other uh, work is that we decided to do for our patient. Consequent improvement in clinical pregnancy rate will be high. But uh, here is this uh, table which show the comparison, comparing the effect of myonistol and uh, metformin in uh, PCOD patient. As you see here, a spontaneous ovulation in metformin about 50%, but in inositol 64%, and inositol plus FSH, we will have pregnancy about 48%. As I mentioned before, um, we can conclude that, that metformin and myonistol can be considered as first line inositol, but you should know it is not uh, completely accepted by, by all authors and it has many discuss and debates about these sentences for storing normal menstrual cycles in most patients with PCOS, even if myonistol treatment seems to be more effective than metformin, as you are seeing in this table, it is from gynecologic and in the endocrinology uh, paper 2010. Finally, 
Myonizitol is one of the important cell factors in development and growth cells. Myonizitol mechanism of action appears to be mainly based on improving insulin sensitivity of target tissue, resulting in a positive effect on the productive axis. Myonizitol distorts ovulation and improves oocyte quality and hormonal function. Myonizitol also reduces clinical and biochemical hyperandrogenism, dyslipidemia, through the reduction of insulin plasma levels, higher concentration of follicular fluid myonizitol is very important and is associated with better oocyte quality in ICSI cycles. Thank you very much.